For this segment of A Bit of Addison History, I would like to introduce a new exhibit at the museum. On the second floor of the coach house, a display now interprets the daily life of the late 19th, early 20th century woman living in rural Addison. Most women from this period were married and were in charge of the household and raising the children. The housewife managed the cooking, cleaning, sewing, and laundry. Cooking for the family was an everyday task. Each morning, the housewife had to rekindle the stove fire with either wood or coal. Ash had to be removed, kindling set, dampers and flues adjusted, and the fire lit. Early cooking utensils were made of cast iron and were heavy and difficult to clean. By the early 1900s, enamel and aluminum kitchenware became readily available, which were lighter and easier to clean. By the 1920s, gas stoves, refrigerators, and more specialized kitchen equipment became more common. Food and spices were often stored in decorative tin containers. Water for cooking and cleaning was hand pumped outside from the well and brought inside to a dry sink. Handmade soap was made from ash and animal fat, and soap catchers were used to make sure all of the soap was used. Household management books encouraged housewives to tidy up the parlor and kitchen every day. This involved sweeping the kitchen floor, cleaning the parlor rug with a sweeper, light dusting, cleaning and trimming the kerosene lamps. By the 1920s, the introduction of electricity made cleaning easier. Electric lights replaced the high maintenance kerosene lamps and electric vacuums improved carpet cleaning. The woman of the house was also charged with sewing and mending the family's clothing, knitting and crocheting woolen gear for the winter, and hand quilting bed coverlets. Sewing was part of a social life of women. At a young age, they were taught needlework skills and often got together with others to sew. The introduction of the foot treadle sewing machine in the mid 19th century freed up the housewife's time tremendously. A shirt which took over 10 hours to hand sew could be completed in little over an hour by machine. The housewife made all of the family's clothes until about 1900, when men's clothes became available ready to wear. If she were not a skilled seamstress, she could hire herself a seamstress to assist her. By the 1920s, stores selling women's and children's clothing and underwear began to appear and gradually eliminated the need for the housewife to sew. Aside from cooking, laundry was probably the most labor-intensive weekly task. Monday was usually wash day. On Sunday night, clothes would be sorted and put in tubs of warm water to soak overnight. The next morning, first the delicates and whites then the calicoes and ginghams, and finally the woolens would be put in a hot suds bath and washed with a washboard or a plunger. Then the clothes would be wrung out and the soap rubbed into the most soiled spots. The clothes would then be placed in a clothes boiler on the stove and boiled. After removal from the stove, the laundry would be scrubbed again, rinsed, and wrung out. The clothes were hung to dry on a clothesline outside or on an indoor drying rack. The next day was ironing day. Several cast irons would be heated on the stove at the same time, so an iron was always ready for use. Crimping or pleating irons were also used for pressing in pleats and ruffles. By the 1920s, laundry became less, less burdensome with the introduction of hot and cold running water, electric washing machines with built-in agitators, and electric irons. The heavy lifting and carting of water, washboard scrubbing or plunging, and hand cranking of ringers, once the hallmarks of laundry day, were eliminated. You can view this exhibit by visiting the Addison Historical Museum. The museum is open Wednesdays and Fridays from noon to 4 p.m. The museum will also be open Saturday, December 8th from noon to 4 p.m. Admission is free.